Speaking of shameful, let's talk about Democrats in this new message or this new plan they have that was unveiled. Their plan is to reach out to rural and working class Americans uh, who put Donald Trump into the White House yesterday. Senator Chuck Schumer, Democrats' minority leader, uh, announced this plan. I was he would, actually he un talked about it on ABC this week on Sunday, but yesterday he was a news conference of the unveiling. When you lose elections, as we did in 2014 and 2016, you don't flinch, you don't blink. You look in the mirror and ask, what did we do wrong? Uh, and of course, uh, midterm elections are in 2018. And so you have this uh, new effort uh, for this particular message. Joining us again, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries. You saw him there standing with Senator Chuck Schumer uh, discussing this. Also, Steve Phillips, of course, he is with uh, the group Power Pack. Uh, he's been very much involved, uh, excuse me, but the founder of Democracy in Color and also uh, with the group Power Pack. Um, Congressman, I want to go to you first. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, Congressman, uh, no disrespect, this plan is trash. I mean, here's my problem. Here's my problem why I'm calling it a trash, okay? Look, I get it. But if you, uh, but Cornell Belcher has broken this down. If Hillary Clinton got, got the black support, uh, uh, of, if she got the support of African Americans in Michigan and Florida, she wins the election. You could, bottom line is, she didn't even go to Wisconsin. They had a ridiculous national strategy when it came to get out the vote efforts, didn't hire black people who were on the ground as well. And let's just be perfectly clear, these rural white workers, they ain't coming to the Democratic Party, okay? They're falling for Trump stuff about illegal immigration, about law and order, they're not. So the Obama coalition is a winning one. I'm sorry, I don't know what this is. Well, Roland, no, I appreciate the observations that you've made. And let me offer a point of clarification. From the perspective of many of us, certainly those from the Congressional Black Caucus, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, the Asian and Pacific Islander Caucus, as well as the Progressive Caucus who participated in the process of developing this message, along with other parts of the House Democratic Caucus and, of course, the United States Senators, we were all of the view that we should have a singular focus in developing a message to deal with the very real economic anxiety that the American people are facing in inner city America, in districts like those I represent in Brooklyn, uh, as well as in suburban America, rural America, blue collar America. And so the question was, if we were to develop an economic agenda, we continue to work on issues like dealing with mass incarceration, criminal justice reform, attacking uh, the voter suppression efforts that are underway all across the country, and certainly this sham commission that Donald Trump has put into place. These are all issues that we will continue to address and to speak out on and to roll out new initiatives. But this effort, singularly, was focused on a unifying economic message to deal with the fact that the system is rigged, is broken, the fix is in against working families, middle class folks, senior citizens, those who aspire to be part of the middle class. It's an economy that doesn't benefit everyone. It benefits the wealthy and the well-off, the rich, uh, and subsidizes uh, the lifestyles of the privileged few. Uh, that hurts African Americans just as much as it hurts people in the so-called white working class. And so the question was, how can we arrive at a set of goals and objectives to deal with the economy and the fact that all of us are being jammed up uh, in a way to promote the special interests. And that's what this announcement was all about. But, but here's the deal, Steve, I want to bring in Steve Phillips with this whole idea of, of this better deal. Uh, again, uh, you have Senator Chuck Schumer who's, sta who's standing out in front on this. But the fundamental issue facing Democrats is not just what's happening in Washington, D.C. If you're going to unveil this kind of plan, this is where you have Democratic governors. This is where you have mayors. This is where you have people uh, who, where it goes beyond Washington, D.C. That's how you drive this message, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. And that it's, uh, it, it's telling, actually, uh, where they went to uh, unveil the message in terms of what some of the, the, the shortfalls of it are. Yeah, so rural, I mean, it, rural Berryville, Virginia. Which is an 86% white county, and a county that 
Trump won and that Mitt Romney won. And so that's the real problem um, with the with the effort. I mean, on its face, I think it's fine. I think that the things that the congressman is saying, you know, are, are points well taken. But fundamentally, this effort is geared towards the wrong voters, and it's based on an incorrect analysis. Uh, Senator Schumer says, what did we do wrong? The premise of that is that what they did wrong was that allowed lots of voters to defect to Trump. What actually what they did wrong was failed to inspire African American voters and allowed too many voters to defect to the third and fourth parties. That brought the Democratic margins down that enabled Trump to slide through. And I haven't seen anything yet that will be bold enough and race specific enough to be able to bring back the African American voters who we lost who were responsible for what happened in the election. That to me, uh, Congressman Jeffries, is the issue here. And again, to me, it's window dressing. Look, I'm not saying Democrats should not be competing for every single vote. I'm not saying Democrats should not be appealing for rural voters. But here's the problem. Shortly after uh, you had the election of Tom Perez as DNC chair, what did they do? Go on a listening tour, and they went to all these rural places in America. Okay. What they're basically saying is, okay, if all y'all folks uh, who are black, who live in a lot of these other different places, we ain't talking to y'all. But that's the ones who have been carrying this party, who carried President Barack Obama to two elections. And so what I don't understand is why, why that wasn't uh, sort of a place where you unveil an economic message. Because if you've had a tsunami that has hit rural America, you've had pure devastation, multiple earthquakes that have hit inner city America. Well, you're absolutely correct about that. And I've said often, look, uh, you know, if Wall Street catches a cold, the African-American community gets a fever. Uh, and that has been the case from time immemorial in this country. I can't speak to the strategy uh, as it relates to how we reclaim the presidency in 2020 or even the Senate seats, which are statewide, because you're absolutely correct. We're not going to get there without an energized African-American or Latino vote or energizing millennials, particularly millennials of color. Uh, and so the points that you're making in that regard, Roland, totally correct. Steve, totally correct. Uh, but I also just wanna say there's a nuance here in terms of our best opportunity to reclaim power and check this out of control presidency are the 24 seats that we need to pick up in the House of Representatives. We're at 194, we're trying to get to 218. Part of the reason that we selected this um, district is because it's represented by a Republican, Barbara Comstock, who's been part of, you know, the wholly owned subsidiary that is House Got Republicans, it. just following in lockstep. And we wanted to send a message. We're going after each and every one of these red districts, flip them to blue. And the reality is they are in only certain parts of America. And so we've got to be sophisticated about taking back the House as well. Uh, Steve Phillips, final comment. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that they are focused on those 24 districts, because that is the key, and those are, uh, we have a chance to take them back. It's important to remember the way we take them back is not by flipping Trump voters, but by having high turnout of the Democratic voters. There's been a significant uh, enthusiasm gap already through the, this year's uh, special elections. If we hold high Democratic turnout, we will take those districts back, but it's by inspiring and motivating the core Democratic voters. All right, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, uh, Steve Phillips, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I want to go to our panel here for a uh, conversation as well. Uh, again, uh, I, to me, this is that new plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, it, it is. We agree on something, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't think that the Democratic Party is going to turn around uh, with policy coming out of Washington, D.C. I do think this is something that has to happen at the state level. I think it's also not just a party issue, a party leadership issue, but a staffing issue as well. And we've seen that um, at the state, local, and federal levels that the Democratic Party does not employ people of color, even though we overwhelmingly vote for people of color. So I think the latest poll shows that though we make up 50 percent of the pie of votership, we make up only 32 percent of the working force um, of, of the Democratic Party, which is a problem because when you come to people who are going to be instituting those messages and strategies on the ground level, if they don't look like you, that message is not received. And to simply say that it's because Barack Obama was not on the ticket this time around is to undercut and accuse us of being a monolith, which we know we are not. And what the Democratic Party failed to learn is that the messenger is as important as the message itself. Hey, go ahead, Avis. Yeah, I mean, this is what, what's really annoying to me about this. You really hit on it there. I'm wondering, who are they listening to? They're listening to white consultants that they hired to give them this 
strategy, which is boneheaded and wrong. They are focusing on a demographic that has not voted for the Democratic Party since the 1960s. And there's no evidence that that's about to turn around. Got it. And I, I would say that, you know, what's really disturbing here is that they know better. We as black, a group of black women met with Tom Perez recently, specifically told them how boneheaded this specific plan is. And they're still marching full step in this direction that quite frankly is going to lead them in the direction of future losses uh, in the, down the road. And so I'll agree with you guys when you're saying that the return on investment, the black vote in the Democrat Party has not been kind, the ROI, I agree with that part. But just take it back, if you look at Obama when he won, there were 700 counties across the country that voted for him twice. This is from East Coast to West Coast. Of those 700 counties that voted for Barack Obama twice, both times, 200 of those counties switched and voted for Trump. And so when yeah, you guys are saying, it, it, hold it's on, let, let, let me say this. And I'm, what I'm saying is, when you say that the Democrats can't get that vote, you're wrong. Obama did. He did. Those counties were in the middle in the middle no, no, of America no, 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 that no, he no, won. No, no. Obama did it twice. You guys nominated, as we no, all no, agree, no, probably, a failed candidate last year, and that's why the Democrats lost last I year. I say can't. I'm speaking of people who they who they've been trying to go after. It's like Hillary Clinton spent all that time trying to appeal to rep white Republican women, which was stupid, a total right. waste of money. Had she driven black turnout, <clears throat> she wins. But they were throwing no, they, they, they threw millions trying to convince women who were never going to vote for her. But there are that, that's what I mean by no, no, I got gotcha. you. That no, no. voted for Trump. No, that voted I, for no, Obama, I understand and that. They're trying to go after no, no, that. I and they're going to fail at that. Those counties. And, no, I'm and, agreeing and, with and you. You're also focusing on a demographic that is shrinking instead of focusing on the demographic that's shrinking. I agree. That's fair. Coming up next, folks. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m on TV One.